What up YouTube and welcome back to another episode on Kubernetes. So in my previous episode of Kubernetes I had mentioned GKE um, and showed an example of running Kubernetes on it. Well in this video I'm going to be using uh, a tool called Minikube which will allow you to run Kubernetes on your local machine. So before I take you guys with me on the install process for Minikube I wanted to quickly explain what it is. So it's a tool that allows you to easily install Kubernetes uh, on your machine. It runs as a single node Kubernetes cluster inside a virtual machine on your laptop or PC or whatever it is you're using, laptop, PC, etc. Um, and it's for people who are looking to try out Kubernetes or who are developing components day to day for Kubernetes and want to test it out on their machine before throwing it into a bit of infrastructure. Cool. So now I want to take you through the installation um, for Minikube. Now, personally, I don't have this on my MacBook, so it'd be nice to see how seamless it is to install on my machine and get Kubernetes running. So before we go with the installation, there are some requirements. So you need the kubectl binary, which in my case I've got. And because of Mac OS, I'll need the xHive driver and VirtualBox or VMware. In my case, I'm running Docker native, so I shouldn't need that driver, but I've installed it just in case. Um, and I like VirtualBox instead of VMware um, as my virtual machine manager. So in my case, I usually prefer the curl command to install Minikube, but because I'm running Mac OS, I'm going to have to use the brew command. So I'm going to copy and paste that into terminal uh, and then let brew install that. Unfortunately, brew is a little bit slow sometimes for me, but let's, um, let's get this set up and see what happens. Cool, so I've been able to get Minikube installed, it took a little bit of time. Um, but now that that's installed, we can go ahead and actually spin up a um, virtual machine and see if Kubernetes provisions seamlessly. So I'm going to type Minikube just to see what commands I have. Um, and as I can see, there's one such as start to start a local Kubernetes cluster. So what we're going to do then is do minikube start and that wants to start the v1.7.0 cluster. So it's now down, downloading the minikube ISO um, and the ISO will basically have all the components inside of it to run Kubernetes on the local machine. Cool, so after about a minute um, I've been able to get a Kubernetes cluster up. Here's the information from earlier from after it downloaded was it was getting a virtual machine IP address, it moved the files into the cluster, set the certificates, it started the cluster components, connected to the cluster, set up kube config, and now kubectl is now configured to, um, to use the cluster. So in this case, I can actually type kubectl get po, which is short for name, uh, pods, um, and I can see I've got these three pods under kube system running for um, my local Minikube Kubernetes cluster. So actually, I can now view the dashboard, I believe, with Minikube dashboard, and I can see that Kubernetes is running locally on my machine seamlessly, um, and I can actually play with it. I can view the nodes, and I can see the node is named Minikube, um, along with the CPU requests, the CPU limits, memory requests, memory limits, etc. Um, and I can actually now go ahead and actually start deving on this machine. I can actually use Kubernetes locally to actually start testing some of my services, maybe writing some components for Kubernetes um, and actually playing with it. So I guess one example would be I should be able to initialize Helm and get a Tillapod running on my local cluster. Yes, so is it wait? Oh, it's watch. So I can see using watch to see what's happening. I can see Tiller is now running. So I could actually do stuff if I wanted to. So I could actually deploy something onto my Minikube machine. Um, let's see if I can actually deploy something while we're here. So if we look under Minikube, well, Chaos Cube will be quite a funky one to <laughs> test on a local machine. Not sure how my MacBook would handle that or like that, but 
Um, an example would be heapster, I guess. So I could just pull this quick start command to run heapster, and it's now going to send that information again um, to Tiller. You can see from above that it says that it's created a service and a deployment. Um, and looking at my Minikube um, Kubernetes cluster, I can see that a pod is now being created from the information above. Cool, so that was actually very seamless to get a Kubernetes local cluster of v1.7.0, which isn't the latest, but it's nearer to the latest, um, running on my machine. And it, it took a good five minutes. Um, but saying that, I guess one of the questions for a lot of you is, why did I do it? Well, I've done it because it's a lot easier to dev with. Rather than um, writing some components, then deploying it into infrastructure that lives in Kubernetes and GKE, I guess it's quick to deploy, but it's, it takes a little bit longer to diagnose or debug things if some things are not working, hence why I want to use Minikube, because then I can actually just build it um, and just use Helm to install the chart and that's it and then I can actually just go away and diagnose a lot quicker than having to deploy it on infrastructure. Um, so that's one of the one of the probably one of the answers to why I use Minikube on my local machine, which is quite cool. Um, and maybe for others as well, there's like things like Raspberry Pis and maybe want someone wants to on their home network or their local network want to run a a Pi cluster full of Raspberry Pis to run stuff internally just to mess about with or innovate with and uh, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, those are, those are probably a few of the answers to why I use Minikube. Um, but now that while I was talking about that, you've noticed that I've um, deleted those pods now because I don't need them running. So it's actually quite seamless and quite easy to do stuff and it feels like um, the environment feels exactly the same as it would if you're deploying to GKE um, or to your personal built cluster that you've built from bare metal, etc. So yeah, that's that was pretty cool. Awesome. So I hope that gave you an overview of Minikube um, and I hope it gave you a bit of an experience of how quick and easy it is to install Minikube to get a local Kubernetes cluster running on your machine. Um, I hope you guys try this out because it's actually pretty neat and it does improve developer environments to when it comes to building stuff or you wanted to test out a Kubernetes cluster that is. Um, but as always guys, um, if you've got any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up um, and make sure you subscribe. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.